Every year, the world discards hundreds of millions of smartphones, each filled with tiny components that are no longer useful to us, but hold an unexpected treasure. Inside these outdated devices lies gold, not metaphorically, literally. Microscopic traces of the precious metal coat circuit boards, connectors, and chips, giving us an opportunity to extract incredible value from what we usually throw away. In fact, one ton of used mobile phones contains more gold than one ton of mined gold ore. But how do we recover it? What kind of technology, precision, and chemistry are involved in turning tech trash into 24 karat treasure? Today, we step inside a high-tech recycling facility where discarded mobile phones undergo a meticulous process to extract pure gold using chemistry, fire, and cutting-edge machinery. This is industrial recycling at its most precise and valuable. This is how 24K gold is made from e-waste. Our journey begins at a centralized e-waste collection hub, where discarded electronics from around the country are gathered. From urban drop-off programs and corporate tech recycling to bulk shipments from phone retailers, the waste arrives in containers, stacked high with smartphones, tablets, and other compact electronic devices. Each of these devices contains minute quantities of precious metals, but first, they must be sorted. Workers at the sorting facility wear protective gear and begin the initial separation process. The outer plastic casings are removed, and lithium batteries are extracted to be handled separately, due to fire and explosion risks. The real prize lies inside. The printed circuit boards, or PCBs. These are the green or blue slabs that house microchips, capacitors, and gold-plated connectors. Each PCB contains a fraction of a gram of gold, but when you have thousands of boards, the numbers add up fast. Circuit boards are collected into large plastic bins, while other parts, screens, plastic, and aluminum are sorted for their own recycling streams. The PCBs are loaded onto a conveyor belt that feeds them toward the material reduction phase. But before they get shredded, any remaining components, such as glass chips or magnetic drives, are removed. This ensures a clean feed and helps prevent contamination in the later chemical stages. This pre-sorting stage is both manual and mechanical. While human workers perform delicate separation tasks, larger mechanical arms and automated trays assist with bulk movement and categorization. Every single action is documented and logged, not only for quality assurance, but for environmental regulation and traceability. This gold extraction process is highly controlled as it involves both valuable materials and hazardous waste. With the non-essential parts removed and the boards carefully sorted, we now move to the next stage, grinding them down into something far more manageable. Once the printed circuit boards have been sorted and stripped of hazardous parts, they enter the second phase, shredding and material reduction. The goal here is simple. Transform bulky boards into fine particles, increasing surface area and making it easier to separate metals later on. The conveyor belt feeds the PCBs into an industrial shredder. This massive machine is fitted with rotating steel blades capable of pulverizing hardened materials. Within seconds, circuit boards are reduced to tiny fragments no larger than a grain of rice. The resulting material, often called e-scrap granulate, is collected in large bins. But this mix isn't just gold. It's a chaotic blend of metals, resins, fiberglass, and microscopic dust. Now it's time to separate the components. First comes magnetic separation. A spinning drum lined with magnets pulls out any ferrous materials, such as leftover screws or steel connectors, that survived the shredding process. Next is the eddy current separator. This high-speed rotating system uses magnetic fields to eject non-ferrous metals like aluminum and copper from the conveyor stream. These lighter metals are pushed into separate bins for recycling. What remains is the real target, a high-density mix of non-magnetic materials including gold, silver, palladium, and platinum, all still attached to fiberglass and resin dust. The dust is passed through vibrating screens and cyclone separators, which sort particles by size and density. Larger chunks are re-shredded, finer, more homogeneous particles move forward. Throughout this process, powerful vacuum systems remove harmful airborne particles, sending them through activated carbon filters to trap toxins. Safety and environmental compliance are paramount. After all, this isn't just valuable, it's volatile. 
By the end of this stage, the factory is left with bags of fine powder, black, gray, and occasionally speckled with metallic glints. Hidden in this unassuming dust is the gold we're after. But separating it from the rest of the material isn't just a matter of filtering, it requires precision chemistry and one of the most powerful reagents in modern metallurgy. The shredded circuit board powder is now ready for the heart of the operation, chemical extraction. And the star of this phase is one of the most powerful reagents known in metallurgy, aqua regia. Aqua regia, meaning royal water in Latin, is a highly corrosive mixture of nitric acid and hydrochloric acid, typically in a 1-3 ratio. This golden yellow solution has a unique ability, it can dissolve gold, a metal resistant to most acids. In sealed chemical reactors, the fine e-waste powder is carefully mixed with the freshly prepared aqua regia. The tanks are made of reinforced materials resistant to corrosion, and the process is fully enclosed to protect both workers and the environment. As the acid mixture is poured in, a chemical reaction begins. Fumes of nitrogen dioxide and chlorine gas rise from the tanks. Industrial ventilation systems quickly capture and neutralize these gases in scrubbers before they reach the outside air. Over the course of several hours, the acids work their way through the powder, breaking molecular bonds and dissolving the gold into a solution of gold-3 chloride, also known as chlorouric acid. This solution takes on a bright orange hue, a visual confirmation that gold is now in liquid form. Once the reaction is complete, the mixture is filtered to remove undissolved materials such as plastic fibers, ceramic particles, and non-precious metals. These solids are safely disposed of or sent for further recycling. Now comes the delicate process of recovering gold from the liquid. To do this, workers add a reducing agent to the gold-rich solution. The most commonly used is sodium metabosulfite, a white crystalline powder. As the reducing agent is added, the solution begins to react. Tiny particles of gold start to precipitate out of the liquid. At first it looks like fine brown dust settling to the bottom of the tank. But under a microscope, this brown sludge reveals its true nature. Microscopic flakes of gold, some as small as one micron across. These flakes cluster together to form what is known in the industry as gold mud. The gold mud is collected, washed with water and diluted acid to remove any remaining chemicals, and then dried in industrial ovens. At this point, it contains over 95% gold by weight, but it's still not pure. The next step, refining and smelting, will take this muddy powder and transform it into glittering bars of 24 karat gold. But before we move on, it's worth noting, the aqua regia process is effective, but dangerous. Strict protocols, chemical handling standards, and environmental safeguards must be in place to prevent accidents or contamination. This is not backyard chemistry, it's industrial science. And it's what makes gold recycling for mobile phones not just possible, but incredibly efficient. With the gold mud fully dried, the next step is turning this powdery residue into solid, gleaming gold. This process is known as smelting, the moment where science meets fire. First, the gold mud is weighed and placed into a high-temperature induction furnace. These furnaces can reach temperatures above 1,100 degrees Celsius, 2,012 Kai, more than enough to melt gold, which liquefies at 1,064 degrees Celsius. Inside the crucible, fluxes, chemical compounds such as borax and silica, are added to help bind with impurities. As the mixture heats, unwanted elements separate and rise to the surface as slag, which is carefully skimmed away, what remains is molten gold, glowing with an unmistakable orange-red light. The liquid metal is then poured into graphite molds, rectangular, heat-resistant containers designed to shape and cool the gold uniformly. Within minutes, the metal solidifies. The bars are removed from the molds and immediately inspected for defects. Each ingot is then cleaned and tested using X-ray fluorescence XRF spectrometry, which verifies the gold's purity. The goal is clear. 24 karat gold, 99.99% pure. These bars might only weigh a few hundred grams each, but they represent the successful recovery of gold from thousands of mobile phones. Their journey from e-waste to bullion is almost complete. Next, they'll be stamped, logged, and either stored securely or re-entered into the global supply chain. Once the gold bars confirm to be 99.99% pure, they are logged and labeled with a unique serial number, weight, and purity rating. 
These details are stored in a centralized digital registry, allowing for full traceability from e-waste origin to final gold product. Security is a top priority. The finished bars are stored in vaults with biometric access, 24-7 surveillance, and reinforced steel doors. Some are retained as inventory, while others are shipped to buyers across the globe. These buyers vary. Jewelry manufacturers often purchase recycled gold to produce high-end rings, bracelets, and luxury watches. Electronics companies reuse the gold for semiconductors, connectors, and microprocessors, particularly for medical devices and aerospace components where conductivity and corrosion resistance are critical. In some cases, the gold is refined even further into gold leaf nano-gold, or specialty chemical forms used in scientific research. What's fascinating is how this gold, once embedded in old smartphones, is reintroduced into the very industries it came from. It's a closed-loop system, where discarded technology becomes raw material for new innovation. Each gold bar is more than just a store of value. It represents a victory of resource recovery over waste, and a powerful example of how materials can live many lives when processed responsibly. Electronic waste is one of the fastest growing waste streams in the world. Every year, we generate more than 50 million metric tons of e-waste, much of it ending up in landfills, leaking toxic substances into the environment. Gold recycling offers a powerful alternative. Traditional gold mining is energy intensive and environmentally destructive. To produce just one gold ring, up to 20 tons of rock may be mined, crushed, and chemically treated, often involving cyanide or mercury. It also consumes vast amounts of water and disrupts ecosystems. In contrast, urban mining, recovering gold from discarded electronics, uses far less energy and generates significantly less waste. It doesn't destroy landscapes or pollute rivers. Instead, it recovers precious metals that already exist in circulation. Recycling also supports circular economy principles, minimizing resource extraction, maximizing reuse, and designing products with end-of-life recovery in mind. Companies involved in electronic recycling are now working to improve efficiency, reduce the use of hazardous chemicals, and expand collection programs globally. Consumers play a role too. By properly disposing of old electronics, we help ensure these valuable resources can be recovered instead of wasted. In the end, gold recycling isn't just about value, it's about responsibility. It's a sustainable model that protects both the environment and the economy. From forgotten drawers to factory floors, from shattered smartphones to gleaming gold bars, the journey of electronic gold is one of transformation. Every step in the process, collection, shredding, chemical extraction, purification, demonstrates the power of modern technology to reclaim value from what we once considered trash. This isn't just recycling, it's industrial alchemy, a practice that turns the waste of yesterday into the resources of tomorrow. And it reminds us that hidden inside our devices are materials with lasting worth, if we know how to retrieve them. Next time you upgrade your phone, think of the tiny traces of gold inside. Know that with the right hands and the right process, that gold doesn't have to be lost. It can be recovered, reused, and reborn.